Hello and welcome to Ghosts of Dufferin County and Beyond. I'm your host, Marianne Kennedy, and we are in the studio today. So we have a really exciting show ahead of us, and I just know you're going to love it. To start with, we're going to be welcoming two psychic mediums, other than myself, to share with us their journey into the spirit world and their eventual professional practices. And the second part of our show, we're going to be welcoming a guest to sit here and have a live mediumship reading with me. For those of you who don't know, mediumship is the process of communicating with loved ones who have crossed over. For me, one of the questions I'm asked most often is how I became a medium. And most people are usually pretty surprised to hear that I wasn't born a medium. I didn't grow up with mediumistic abilities or psychic abilities, nothing that I'm aware of anyway. I was the youngest of four kids and for all observational purposes, I was very quiet and um, kept to myself. Didn't speak very much uh, other than when being spoken to, which is probably a generational thing. But there are a couple of trains of thought around um, backgrounds or where you have to come from to actually be a medium and there are some philosophies that speak to uh, the idea of needing to be born with the ability or with the talent. So we all come from different places. For me, my interest in mediumship or spirit communication actually began when I lost my father to cancer. After he passed, I had big questions and they required big answers. And so I set myself out on a journey to find some of those answers. And along the way, I committed to a practice of learning, learning spirit communication, and eventually moving into professional work. But for me, I was brought to this work through loss, which is the case for a lot of folks that I work with. But it's important to know that it doesn't really matter where we come from. The philosophy behind my teaching practice, the philosophy behind my book, How to Become a Medium, is that we are all born with the ability. For some of us, we're aware of that ability really early on in life. And for others, it's a conscious choice to learn to make the connection. So for those of you at home that feel called or connected to the idea about learning about the formless or mediumship or spirit communication in some way, what I want to say to you is this, it doesn't matter if up until this point you've had any experiences that suggest to you it's possible. What I want to say to you is that my years of mentorship and training and of other mediums and also my own personal experiences is that it really is one choice away for you. So welcoming to the show now, we have Tina Hinsberger of Moonstone Medium right here in Orangeville. And we have Leanne Chinhutta of Reiki Healing Orangeville, again, right here in Orangeville. Both of them are psychic mediums and also Reiki masters. So welcome to the show, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Tina, let's start with you. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about your practice, but also what brought you to the spiritual journey? Absolutely. Thank you, Marianne. Um, my practice consists of um, doing mediumship readings, uh, doing intuitive readings as well, and, um, and Reiki sessions. Um, my journey, it, I've always been fascinated with connecting with spirit since I was a child. I've always wanted to connect with spirit. I was, I recall being very frustrated that I didn't have experiences. I was drawn to other people who shared experiences with me and um, connected um, in friendship with, with people along the way who did have experiences and really wanted those experiences for myself as well. Um, as I got older uh, and moved into adulthood, I put that desire to one side for a very long period of time. Um, it was always in the background, but I, I kept it to one side. I went into a helping profession, so I was helping others um, in my profession. And um, it wasn't until 2008 when my world got rocked, um, my youngest brother, uh, with whom I was very, very close, suddenly passed. Um, and it was a very tragic passing. Um, we were, um, we, I always said that we were two sides of the same coin. Mm. Um, we were extremely close. And it was then that it really 
transformed me to the point where I took a really good hard look at um, where I was in my life and where I wanted to be. Uh, and then my father passed um, five years later, a very different passing. He was so ready to go. He was 94, had lived a beautiful long life. Um, and after his passing, I sought out some guidance, um, wanted to connect with him, um, wanted to connect with both of them in spirit. And I started um, looking for courses or workshops that would assist me in doing that. Um, and when I did find them, it took a long time before uh, really the, the stars aligned and, and I was actually able to attend one of those. So being able to put aside some of the other things I was doing in my life to be able to do that. And my initial goal was only to connect with my loved ones. That was where I wanted to be. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and as soon as I started doing practice readings for others, when I was sitting um, in these courses and workshops, when I was sitting in mediumship circles, um, I, I loved that aspect. I loved being able to give others um, peace, to give others um, messages, um, to allow them to really start to move forward on their healing journey. That became first mm -hmm. and foremost in my mind and the connection with my own loved ones was really just an added yeah, bonus we, at that point. Yeah, we yeah. have a very similar story in terms of our journey into mediumship. Uh, was initially brought uh, or spurred out of loss mm -hmm. and the initial intent was to connect with your own spirit people and eventually that became broader it became a bigger level of service and that's what I've always found with students I've worked with is that um, most not all but most uh, come with the agenda to make contact with their own people and then this really beautiful gift of spirit that evolves um, becomes uh, a, a healing service to others who have experienced something really similar. So Leanne, can you tell us a little bit about your practice and also what brought you to uh, the world of spirit, energy, mediumship, all of it? Uh, thank you. Um, my similar is very, uh, sorry, my story is very similar to Tina's um, and a lot of others. Mine came through loss as well with my brother. Um, we saw a medium and she knew everything. She knew things she couldn't possibly know unless she was talking to them. So I was under the belief too that you had to be born with this gift and asked her about it and she, she had no ability to pull for her daughter, her, the loss of her daughter. So I read her book and started meditation classes, mediumship classes. Um, that led me into Reiki certification and I absolutely fell in love with Reiki. So I opened up the business um, for Reiki and then clients started um, having their loved ones come through as I was giving a Reiki session. So Spirit always gives us that gentle nudge for the next step in our journey. So I started more mediumship classes and then offering that to clients um, and that, that, that led to meditation courses. So yeah, that's um, all of the services I offer through my business and all, all came through loss. And that's amazing. It's amazing that at some point on the journey, we can take devastation being rocked onto your knees into something that eventually becomes so beautiful. Um, what about you, Leanne? Tina talked about being young, not having many experiences, but really being fascinated with it, which I was too. Not necessarily about mediumship, but about uh, maybe psychic experiences. Just really quickly, did you have any experiences as a young child Nothing. at all? Nothing super at all. Super fascinated okay. by it. Fascinated by it, right. Okay, but, super. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I'd like to ask you now, and maybe we'll go back to you, Tina, is if you had some wisdom or advice for someone who feels a calling to get on to some type of a spiritual journey and, and I think that there are a lot of folks out there who do feel this but don't know where to go or where to begin what would you say to them I've been very blessed in my life every aspect of, of everything that I've done in my life there has been a mentor associated with that mm -hmm. um, including the mediumship including the Reiki um, and um, and it's it really just starts with being open that if there is if you haven't made that connection with someone yet, that they they will come into your awareness, and um, whether it's it's now um, or whether it's a little bit further into the future, um, when you are ready to begin that journey, 
there will be somebody who will help guide you. Either they will connect you with the mentor that you end up um, learning from, mm -hmm. or they will be that mentor. That's right, um, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, right? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. And that's a great point, a mentor in spiritual work is very, very important. There is a lot of complexity to things we can't see, and it's really mm -hmm. helpful to have someone help you along the way, and I would argue that it's necessary um, at some, to, some, to some point anyway. Leanne, what about you? What advice or wisdom would you have for someone looking to get into any type of spiritual experiences? I would say um, if they want to open up spiritually, to go for it, whether that's meditation, learning mediumship, any spiritual course, um, it can only enhance your life. The love and the peace that you experience experience is almost unexplainable. You don't even know that that's available to you until you open that door. So I would say to go for it. Um, as far as a spiritual practice, I would say always just check in to make sure you're still operating from the heart. Um, you know, people are coming to you with their most intimate problems with their deepest mm -hmm. grief. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not something to go into lightly. Um, definitely make sure you're being in service to others and always operating from a place of love and respect. Yes, it's so beautiful and so important in, in my work in teaching um, at the School of Mediumship and Spiritual Studies. Personal development is a huge part of the curriculum that I teach um, because we are, in fact, working with others who are often in their most vulnerable state and working from heart center, working from an ethical place, working from a space of sort of verified ability um, is really important if we are to uh, become a professional in this work. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that it, it speaks to, when I listen to both of you speak, I think uh, your stories, your wisdom that you have to share uh, speaks to your commitment to self-development and, and personal development along the way so that you can become the clearest channel necessary mm -hmm. uh, for the folks that you help, help along with your practices. So if you could let us know, Tina, where can we find out more information about you and your practice? So I have a website. It's uh, www.moonstonemedium.com. I'm also um, on Facebook. Uh, so I have a Facebook page uh, and I have a Twitter page too. So okay, any of those ways you can, you can reach me. Wonderful, thank um, you. Leanne? Uh, same uh, uh, Facebook um, website, www.reikihealingorangeville.com. I also am blessed to work with Marianne out of the School of Mediumship and Spiritual Studies. All of my classes are offered there in Hillsburg. Um, and Facebook, Reiki Healing Orangeville. Wonderful. Thank you both for being here. Thank we are going to take a little bit of a break and we're going to come back and when we come back we'll have a new person sitting with us and we're going to experience a live on-air mediumship reading. See you after the break. So there's a lot of energy here. My Oh wow, can you see my eyes moving? Wow. This feels like a little bit of a grumbly energy. Welcome back to Ghosts of Dufferin County and Beyond. We have our volunteer here today, Donna. Donna is the winner of a contest to have a private sitting with me here uh, in studio. And so just for the home audience, Donna, if we could just confirm, you and I have never met before, is that correct? No. Okay, wonderful. We are going to be doing a mediumship reading today, and so for those of you at home who aren't sure what a mediumship reading is, it is connecting with folks who have crossed over. And so, Donna, have you ever had a mediumship reading before? Yes. Okay, and how was your experience with that? I'm very good, actually. Oh, good. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes tuning into your energy and see who we have here with you today. Okay, thank you. Oh, 
Okay, so these folks did in fact step forward a few minutes before we uh, started filming today. So I'm gonna start with this. I do have two males coming forward. Um, one is definitely an older generation. Older generation to you feels like a paternal energy. And he comes forward with a younger male energy. Um, I definitely am not talking about a child um, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, adolescent, a bit older than that. Definitely people would say uh, he would have passed before his time, gone too soon. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna see which one's coming forward more strongly so that I can connect um, with the one that really wants to get my attention today. So mm -hmm. just a minute for that. Um, okay, the first thing that I need to say to you is that it's really important you understand that the two of them actually are connected on the other side. Mm -hmm. So they've reunited. And the term reunited is coming up, which is my symbol that they knew each other here in the physical world. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, for the younger male that's stepping forward, um, I can straight away hear fingers snapping. So that's my symbol that if I talk about his passing, this is something that either happened very quickly for him um, or unexpectedly. Uh, do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And that makes sense for the younger male, just so I'm sure who I'm with there. Is that right? Yes. Right. Okay. Um, he is coming in below you uh, generationally, so for me that's either going to be like a son, a nephew, uh, like a best friend's child. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Uh, he draws me a really big heart right now, so actually there's a huge loving connection between the two of you. Um, so do you understand this? Is this a son for you? It's my son. Your son. Okay, perfect. He uh, wants me to tell you how much he loves you, Mom. Okay. Um, I'm not going to spend long on this, but I do want to say to you that um, just in terms of his passing, um, he just had my body feel like, uh, I'm not sure if this is a fall or like an impact, but I feel like I just got a jolt in my body. Um, does that make any sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, and it's important that he says to you about that, actually, even just before that, Pardon me, they're always, you know, the ones yeah. dictating this process. He actually wants me to talk about this question mark first. So um, he shows me a question mark. This is my symbol that uh, at the time of his passing, not, uh, not everything was clear or evident. There were some questions around the occurrence or what has gone on there. And he's also showing me uh, lights, which is my symbol that there would have been some level of like either p police or like investigative involvement. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, Yeah, and he's kind of showing me sort of like uh, bits of information sort of being revealed bit at a time. So would it be safe to say that since his passing, some information sort of came to light either yes. for you or for others where it was not fully known at that time? Yes. Okay. Uh, and the other thing that he wanted me to say to you is that um, it's important, and I hope you understand this from what you do know, um, that he, his passing or his transition was basically like immediate for him because he's talking about no suffering to me. Yes. Okay. Is that true to what you know? Yeah, I know that. Okay. Um, and he's just sort of pushing out, uh, pushing out to his side. He wants me to acknowledge siblings, and I know at least. I'm not sure if he's if he actually if he's one of three or he has three siblings. Um, does that make sense in some way for you? He has three siblings. Okay, perfect. Um, He also makes me feel like his energy must have been like, uh, like a boy's boy or like a, I, I want to say man's man, but I feel like he might not be quite old enough to really embody that, but I feel like he had like really strong male friendships. Um, yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And so he's got to at least have, actually there's a plural here about brothers. So there must be at least two brothers. There could be three, but there's at least two because he's making a plural for me. All I have is four boys, so it's all brothers. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Okay, that's the, the, that boy's boy energy. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And really close, close, close relationship. And I need to, uh, with his brothers he's talking about, um, including now, I need to tell you that. So he is like very present in their lives um, in a big way, even though he might not have been one to share a lot of wisdom with them when he was here necessarily, but he is doing that now. And he wants to say that he's like watching out for them. And I also feel like, um, uh, okay, so where's he going with that? He's talking about, 
Is there one of his brothers that, um, I don't know, he's talking about like an injury. Is there a brother that has it, like injured himself in a, I don't know, in a way that but, um, is more than just like, you know, stubbing a toe or spraining an ankle? Uh, yeah. Okay. Truly, there's one that's had like if because it looks like even maybe surgery or yes. um, that idea to it, like an injury has happened. Yes. Okay, and that's with one of his brothers. Just so I, I yes. know where I'm at. Okay, because um, he wants to say that he was actually. Can I just verify that there was a surgery? Because he's talking to me about yes. being there in the hospital when his brother was having surgery. Yes. But in spirit. Mm -hmm. Follow yes. me. Okay. Good. I don't know if he could let his brother know that that his brother was there with for him, supporting him from the other side when his brother was in surgery. Okay? Yep. Okay. Um, I need to ask if there's a name like uh, something, uh, this is like a CH name, but it, it, it's either going to be maybe like Chris or Christine. Chris. Chris? Okay, who's Chris? And there's also a Christine. Okay, Chris who's, who's Chris and Christine? Is his baby brother. Oh, okay, perfect. And Christine is the mother of his child. <laughs> Holy cow, okay. <laughs> it's really important that he acknowledge them. Like, he's got a lot of love and he wants to make sure that he gets a chance to say hi to them today, okay? Yeah. I also need to talk about a J male, and it's a short J male Jesse? name. I, I'm gonna tell you this, it's only gonna be Jesse if it gets shortened to Jess ever because it's yeah. one syllable. Do, do they go by Jess? Yeah. Okay, um, that's someone he also wants to say hello to. That's his oldest brother. Okay, perfect. Well, he's all about his brothers today. <laughs> he was very family oriented. Yeah, for sure. So there's something, Donna, that he's talking to me about where, um, actually there's some kind of a borderline around uh, like dr drinking or drinking age. So I actually want to ask you, is he either sort of like just on the cusp before drinking age or just after? You know, that would be like 19 years old here in Ontario type thing. He um, was 18 and a half. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, there's some kind of a border thing here, here yeah. happening. Because I'm going to explain to you what he's saying to me about it. Is that before sort of like a legal ability to, to maybe have a couple of beers type thing, um, he tells me that he did even beforehand. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, awesome. <laughs> like, I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but um, this is what he's saying to me. Um, and there's this other thing he wants me to talk to you about. He says to me that you are like the best mother in this whole world. And don't you ever doubt that for a minute? Because um, I feel like you said you have all boys, right? Yeah. There's nothing in this world that you would never do for them. You would do absolutely everything and anything, and you always have. Because he says to me that. In addition to his brothers, you were the person that he could count on for anything, yeah. you know? Even when you were a little ticked at him about a couple of <laughs> yeah. choices that he made, he's talking to me about, um, he always knew you loved him and you'd always be there for him. Um, and so you made this life as short as it was for him, you made it the best it was ever gonna be. And he wants to thank you for that. Thank you, Joe. Okay, there are some things coming up here around um, something legal, he's talking about legal. Mm -hmm. um, actually, there's a couple things he's talking about. One, there's a, there is a situation around his passing that feels legal related that yeah. is either still going on or occurred after afterward. Yes. And then, uh, did he also get into a little bit of trouble himself at some point? No. Nope. Okay, um, is there a brother that did? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I feel like the brother has like tuned it up or has like improved his life in some way where that's less likely to happen. Is that true? Yeah, we're hoping, yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, the thing about the legal reference for him is that it feels really heavy on you. Okay. Um, was it like a real drag down for you to have to be involved in? It still is. Oh, it still is, okay. Because there's a message for you that he has about that. Um, because I feel like you've done all the right things up until this point he's talking about. So you actually have had involvement in whatever this legal aspect is related to his passing. Is that correct? Like you, you personally, you're not just informed about it. You no. were engaged in some way. I we did an investigation. Okay. Um, because what he's saying to me is that there have been some results or um, some outcomes that have occurred as a result of of. I suppose it's the investigation he's talking about, although I'm not 100% sure. I just know this is legal around his passing. And he says to me that um, the results that have come out of this 
issue or challenge that you've been a part of legally, I actually feel from him that there's nothing new coming out of that. It's like it's it like it's almost like it ends. It's sort of like the end of a road he's showing me. Yeah. I don't know fully what that means, but do you understand what he I is do. saying there? I, do. I don't I feel like you've done everything you need to do up until this point. There've been some kind of I don't know if results or information is what has come out, but what he's saying to me is like I, I, I feel like the likelihood of that even continuing in some direction is like very unlikely. No, I know. Okay. Um, so his message to you around it is to sort of like bit by bit um, try to release parts of your heart that are invested in whatever this road or yeah. sort of process is because I feel like you could stay really attached to it but it feels like very very little more comes out of it so he's like bit by bit so don't do it all at once I don't know what that means he's saying yeah. bit by bit okay okay all right I do um, where are we here? We're in Sept are we in September? Yes, we're in September. Yeah. There's, is there someone's, uh, is there this either a birthday or a death date that's either just happened or it's coming up real soon? I'm not sure if it's actually for him or one of his brothers, but it's important. His birthday's the 29th. Of this month? Of this month. Perfect. All right. Donna, he says that, uh, he's showing me a big rose, and he says to me that he knows that you're going to celebrate his birthday for him, and he loves you to no end for continuing to celebrate him, and you're not afraid to speak his name, no, and he I, thanks you for that. You're welcome, baby. Donna, I'm gonna leave you with that with your son. Thank you. You're welcome.